There is suspicion tonight that in the wake of the September 11th attacks, British journalists used bribery and wiretapping to access the voicemail of victims and their families. A New York congressman has asked the FBI to investigate News Corporation, which owns Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, and the now shamed and shuttered British tabloid News of the World. At the center of the scandal is the man who built News Corp, Rupert Murdoch, and ABC's Jeffrey Kaufman has the latest. Unless you live in a cave, Rupert Murdoch's media empire probably touches you every week. Fox TV, Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, 200 newspapers around the world. Here in Britain, he dominates the media landscape. But this has been a bruising week for Rupert Murdoch. There is a firestorm, if you like, that is engulfing parts of the media, parts of the police, and indeed our political system's ability to respond. It's been one stunning revelation after another. Murdoch's headline hungry reporters allegedly hacking cell phones of murdered children, victims of terror attacks, even bribing the Queen's security officers. And this, allegations that reporters hacked the voicemails of 9-11 victims in New York, prompting calls today for a Justice Department inquiry. It would be, you know, in my mind, uh, probably the, the most invasive uh, and perverse use uh, of uh, a victim's information in the final moments of their lives. Sorry, None of this is a surprise to actor Hugh Grant, star of Four Weddings and a Funeral and a longtime target of the tabloids. Today, he talked with Nightline about how he waged his own covert operation and turned the tables on the tabloids. When did you first get a sense that they were listening in on your life? Well, that was those paranoid moments when uh, photographers would pop up out of nowhere in the most unlikely places, and you thought, how could they possibly know that? And you'd think, uh, did a friend of mine leak it? Or Five years ago, Grant got the answer. Police contacted him to say that a private investigator had been routinely hacking his phone, listening to his voicemails. That investigator worked for the London tabloids. Grant learned he was just one of many victims. Tabloids are using private detectives who are using illegal techniques, and it's very widespread. And the government did nothing, absolutely nothing, because of their terror of the press. Paul McMullen was a reporter and editor at Murdoch's now defunct News of the World, the epicenter of the scandal. Would you stop at doing anything to stop getting a story? No, you wouldn't. You would go and do anything. There's even breaking the law. Absolutely even breaking the law. Last Christmas, a seemingly random encounter spurred Grant into action. He was driving his new Ferrari in the countryside when it broke down. Who pulled up and started snapping photos? Paul McMullen. Grant curses, but he needs a ride. I end up uh, having this conversation with him in which he starts boasting about the fact that he used to work for the News of the World and that uh, he still keeps his camera in his glove box of the car just in case of some happy accident like this. And he gives me everything. He gives me everything about how they used to hack my phone, how phone hacking, contrary to opinion at that time, this is earlier this year, uh, it wasn't a small, isolated incident, but was massive on an industrial scale. McMullen invites Grant to visit the pub he now owns. Then he sells the pictures for a quick $5,000. Eager for some payback, Grant does visit McMullen in the spring, wearing a hidden recording device. What did you learn? The extent of phone hacking, how, how, you know, how prevalent it was. It's an odd time here in Britain. Actors acting like journalists and journalists acting like criminals. You say, and I felt a little guilty about doing it. I didn't feel that guilty. I mean, there was a sort of perfect symmetry to it, really. Grant published his account of the encounter in April. But it wasn't until last week when it was alleged that murder victim Millie Dowler was also a phone hacking victim. That's when the scandal exploded. We've seen nothing short of a revolution in the space of 10 days. This was a country that was effectively ruled by Rupert Murdoch. And right now in Parliament, they're pretty much telling him to get out of the country. Now you're telling me that for the last 30 years, it's not the Queen that the, that the, the Prime Minister has reported to, it was Rupert Murdoch? Yes. 
frankly, I am telling you that. And, and that's why when people ask me what my motive in all this is, um, I absolutely admit a lot of it's personal grievance. Uh, any human being who finds that their privacy has been hacked, you feel a natural atavistic sense of rage and you just want to reach for a cricket bat and smash someone around the head. So I'm not denying there is that. But I am also uh, furious for my country. Um, you know, I, I like to feel proud of this country. I like to feel proud of that curious um, labyrinthine uh, machine of, of checks and balances that keeps our democracy working. And, and the fact that it's got this great cancer on it uh, from News International and from, and from the other aspects of the tabloid press uh, horrifies me. And I you know, found myself out in the open uh, shouting about it. And now, it's not just the nation, but the world that is listening. I'm Jeffrey Kaufman for Nightline.